good afternoon and thank you very much indeed for the opportunity to join you and say a few opening remarks in your first day of your course. This is uh, an exciting time and a very important time to be running courses on physical activity, to be developing local and regional plans and I'm delighted to be able to make a few remarks about the progress we've had in the global physical activity promotion and some of the products and uh, tools we've got to use. The problem, as you know, is global. Physical inactivity is a big problem in many countries and most regions. The solutions, however, to how we start to turn the tide and increase participation will very much be at the local level. Discussing how and what and with whom will be very much the focus of your course and the discussions that you have throughout the sessions. Physical inactivity is currently running at 31%, that's inactivity. One in three adults do not meet the recommendations, but we can see it is much higher in some countries. But the good news is it's much lower in other countries. And of course, learning from those countries, the policies, programs and strategies will be really important to help get the global levels of inactivity down, and particularly in Italy, increasing participation. We've got lots of documents and we've had really good progress at promoting physical activity as part of the non-communicable disease agenda. It's been a long time coming, but in the last decade we really have seen an increase in the recognition of the importance of this field. The background documents here you may be familiar with from the World Health Organization positioning the importance of non-communicable diseases. In the foreground, the left-hand side, you see the political de declaration, the output from the United Nations meeting in September 2011. I hope you're familiar with this. It provides the mandate, the call to action, the sign-up of which really holds accountability in all countries to implement strategies, policies, programs to prevent non-communicable disease. And of course, it draws attention to the risk factors, and the environments and policy levers we need to uh, work together to implement uh, at, for effective action. I hope some of you, and I hope all of you, will start to use the Lancet uh, supplement of uh, July last year, just before the Olympic Games in 2012 in London. This, this article, or sorry, this journal issue is an entire issue focused on physical activity, from monitor, monitoring through to policy and through to the pre, uh, uh, practice and partnerships we need to implement to address physical activity. A great resource for all of us to use. It is using these that's important because it's the time to act and we need to use our policy instruments of which on the left hand side you're familiar with the global strategy, the supporting documents, but the forthcoming ones on the right hand side are important to note and to be discussing now and in the future. Next month at the World Health Assembly, the global strategy for the prevention and control of non-communicable disease will lay out the next seven year plan for action at a member state level. What we can do and how we should do it. On the bottom you see almost complete and will also be addressed at the World Health Assembly the monitoring framework, a set of goals and targets. Let's briefly look at these. The monitoring framework sets out the indicators for a reduction in mortality and morbidity, a reduction in risk factors and improvements in our health systems, better prevention, better access, better services. I'm delighted to say that we have, through advocacy and shared action, achieved a risk factor um, for uh, a risk factor indicator for physical inactivity and it's one of a number of voluntary goals set out for member states. So I hope Italy along with many of the European countries will be endorsing these, will be accepting and will start to work towards the target for physical inactivity of a 10% reduction. What will that look like? Well we estimate a 1% change per year over the next 10 years. I hope we can do better, we should do better. More quicker would be uh, ideal, but that is a goal set, realistic goal for all member states. Looking at the strategies we need to employ to reach that goal, we need to see what are the tools we can use and what do we know is effective. Let me turn now to the Global Charter and the seven investments, which I know many of you are familiar with and you've got structured in your course over the next two days. The 
Global Charter and the investments are two of three, three tools we've developed to help discussions and to guide action. The Global Charter was launched in 2010 in Toronto at the third International Conf Congress. Toronto was the place, but the goal is global. You can see the six-page charter is structured around providing a rationale, a purpose, some principles, a framework, and of course, an outline of what we need to do, the call to action. The framework is a um, modified version of the Ottawa Charter, drawing in the need to work at multiple levels, with multiple partnerships, at the policy and at the practice level. This has now been used to guide the development of national policy at country level and at regional level and even at the local level in a range of countries and we're familiar with Scotland that's been using it, uh, Canada that's been using it, Thailand that's been using it to move on the national level with a policy and a strategic plan for the next four or five years. Perhaps this is exactly what you're planning to think about here in your meeting over the next couple of days. The Charter has also proved to be enormously successful in engaging people and engaging across multiple sectors. At the launch, we had a number of different strategies, as you can see, with the sign-up board and the celebrations, and this was replicated in other regions. It's a great way to launch a Charter, launch a strategic plan with engagement and create some media and political and, and cross-sectoral involvement. I'm delighted to say that we've had translation of the Charter into 23 languages and thank again those Italian colleagues that led with the development of the Italian translation so you too have the Charter ready for use. Used to influence politicians and decision makers, use as a tool in your discussions about what to do in your region around promoting physical activity. And that's where the second document comes in, the importance of knowing that the actions are very much at the local level and very much at the specific setting and strategy. So let's have a look at what the Investments That Work document developed shortly after the UN Political Declaration. It outlines seven areas, seven settings where we know the evidence supports uh, interventions, policy, programs and services that can increase participation through supporting environments and provision of, of opportunities. It's not one of these seven areas, it's all of these seven areas. And if you look at it as a whole pie, it's about integrating these, putting them in place over time. No one solution will be enough. And often we can't start in more than two or three of these areas to gain some wins and get uh, buy-in from across the sectors. But the goal here is to implement across all seven. That's our best buy and that's what we all work towards. Working towards it though means putting it all together and working across multiple sectors, developing strategic plans and I'm delighted to say that there is an increasing number of strategic plans at the national level and within countries at regional level and sometimes even at local city level. This is all great progress. I look forward to seeing the Italian national, national policy and perhaps more uh, shortly your regional policy and strategy for physical activity. It's going to take leadership to put this all together and the use of evidence. We must use what we already know and we must contribute to the research and evaluation. Contribute through good practice and therefore evaluation of that to inform what we know and of course good use of that known evidence from research. So the uh, researchers amongst you, the practitioners amongst you, the policy makers amongst you all have a role to play in putting this together. And that's why developing that workforce, developing the partnerships is so important. We need good people with skills and knowledge if we're going to tackle this global agenda. Please join the Global PA Net to share your work, share what you're doing and learn from others. This is a free bi-weekly e-newsletter. You'll hear more about that from my colleagues, Karen and Sonia, who are in the audience and presenting to you over the next couple of days. The website is there. Please join and join the global efforts. It's all part of the work of GAPA and the International Society. I hope your work is successful. I hope you have an excellent two days. Thank you for the opportunity to join you and I hope that your efforts will help deliver what we're all working for in terms of a happier and more active world. Thank you very much and good luck.